In August 2020, a team of police officers filmed themselves tackling and arresting a man named Peter Foster on a beach in North Queensland, Australia. Many called the dramatic arrest overkill. Others felt that Foster deserved the public humiliation. Foster calls himself an international man of mischief. He was one of the most prolific con men in history. Western countries such as England are obsessed with weight loss, especially easy solutions that require no exercise or dieting. Enter Bay Lin Tea, a brew from China with alleged weight loss effects. Foster started marketing Bay Lin as an effective weight loss product in the 80s with surprisingly successful results given that it was just regular Chinese black tea. Veronica Ali, the third wife of Muhammad Ali, whom Foster was good friends with at the time, introduced Foster to the magic tea. Foster brought Bay Lin back to his home in Australia and created an unbelievable marketing strategy to sell the tea to people seeking easy weight loss solutions. He called Bay Lin as an ancient Chinese diet secret and a slimming tea. Foster says he put on extravagant exhibitions showing how well the product worked. The tactics fooled many people into giving Foster their money for a phony magical tea. Foster supposedly worked hard promoting Bay Lin tea, but he wasn't alone. He had a partner of sorts, 80s pinup girl Samantha Fox. The 80s were a wild time, and very few models embodied the decade quite like Samantha Fox. With some calling her the most photographed woman of the 80s, Fox was a prominent adult symbol in her heyday. She was also a pop star, releasing several international hits with titles like Touch Me, I Want Your Body. These days, she's most remembered by her generation as a Page 3 girl. Page 3 was basically the playboy of Britain, and you could find it in The Sun, a popular tabloid magazine. The Sun asked Fox to do a topless photo, and her stardom grew from there. According to the international man of mischief himself, Foster and Fox met at a party. Foster recognized her that evening and intentionally ignored Fox nearly the entire night. He says he talked to every woman in the place except for Fox until she finally approached him and asked him to dance. Foster says he read in that morning's newspaper that she could have any man in the world. To him, she could have every man except one, Foster. Foster is a self-proclaimed master of reverse sale, a marketing strategy that entices potential customers by either underplaying your cards or ignoring potential customers. The strategy, according to Foster, worked on both customers and women. And though his story might not be true, Foster did indeed date Samantha Fox. At the time, Fox was in her early 20s. She said in subsequent interviews that she never dated someone like Foster ever again and blamed the lousy relationship choice on her young age. Fox at the time couldn't see the real reason Foster wanted to marry her. The marketing wizard needed free advertising. Baylin Tea was selling well, but it could always sell more. And products like mystical Chinese weight loss tea are perfect products for influencers to endorse, especially an attractive, physically unattainable person like Fox. Throughout their short relationship, Foster asked Fox to help promote his tea, and she obliged. At the height of her career, Fox told people in her home country, the UK, to buy Bay Lin tea. Believe it or not, Fox wasn't Bay Lin's most famous spokesperson. Foster reeled in another famous British woman with direct ties to the British royal family the Duchess of York, Sarah Ferguson. Like Fox, the Duchess was all over British tabloids, but for different reasons. The Duchess of York, more commonly known as Fergie, is Prince Andrew's ex-wife. Every member of the royal family deals with vast amounts of attention from the press. In the same breath, they also wield a tremendous amount of influence, and anyone associated with them automatically brings credibility, prestige, and royal wonder. In other words, perfect kind of person to promote a weight loss tea. Foster enlisted Fergie to promote Baylin tea throughout Britain, completely unaware that the product was a scam. Eventually, Australia figured out Foster's scam and fined him thousands of dollars, leading to the tea business filing for bankruptcy in 1988. Other con men would have given up. Foster wasn't your average con man. He'd been scamming since his 20s when he swindled $49,000 from an insurance company. Foster still got caught for it and was subsequently fined over $70,000. Nevertheless, Foster kept working, kept scamming. He filmed a documentary with Muhammad Ali, attempted to promote one of his fights, and marketed a new method for quitting smoking. After the Baylin tea scam failed, Foster left the UK and traveled to the United States with a new weight loss tea he dubbed Cho Lao. 
He eventually got in trouble for selling Cho Lao tea and moved back to the UK. Foster immediately got back to his usual activities after moving, marketing phony products and investments in wooing famous women. This time, the victim was married to the most powerful man in Britain, then Prime Minister Tony Blair. Sherry Blair only spent five minutes with Foster, but it was enough time to convince her he was for real. The international man of mischief knew Sherry through a mutual friend named Carol Kaplan, whom Foster was dating. Foster learned that Sherry wanted to buy two properties in Bristol, but didn't want to pay the retail price. The pair corresponded through email, emails that came back to haunt them years later. By the early 2000s, Foster was a well-known fraudster, especially in England, where he committed his most epic crimes. It would look bad for any public figure to hire Foster as their unofficial financial advisor and negotiator, much less the Prime Minister's wife. An individual named Paul Walsh realized the gravity of the situation and called Foster to offer him an ultimatum. Pay $93,000 and he won't leak the story of Foster's dealings with Sherry. Foster roped Walsh into investing in another one of his weight loss schemes called Renuel. Walsh had already sunk thousands into the business and was worried that he'd lose their investment capital if Foster and Sherry's relationship went public. Foster alerted Downing Street, the British equivalent of the White House, and they immediately hired a crisis PR consultant. Sure enough, three days after they hired the consultant, the Daily Mail broke the story and everything erupted in chaos. Needless to say, no one looked good in this story. Many were outraged that the Prime Minister's wife had allowed a con artist into the inner circle of Downing Street. Initially, Downing Street denied knowing Foster. Then, Daily Mail published the email exchanges between Sherry and Foster, showing that they knew each other and talked like business associates. In one email, Sherry called Foster a star, telling him they were on the same wavelength. Sherry Gate was a disaster for both Sherry, her husband Tony, and Foster, who was back in the news again for scandalous reasons. Foster wasn't the only one hurt by the negative publicity. His mother, who'd never scammed anyone in her life, felt the public's wrath. Louise Foster Paletti was a successful real estate agent working primarily on the rapid development of Gold Coast, a beautiful skyscraper-laden city on Australia's east coast. Despite a successful career in real estate, Louise's life, legacy, and reputation were tarnished by her son's dictionary-sized list of crimes. People also criticized her for showing continued support for her son. She advocated for her son many times, visiting him in jail once a week, campaigning for his release, and asking the UK not to extradite him and succeeding. In 2019, Foster's mom revealed that she had terminal cancer. Foster rushed back home to see her when he heard the news and took care of Miss Foster during her final 18 months. Foster told interviewers that he helped care for his bedridden mother like a nurse would, even taking her to the bathroom when she needed help getting there. He says that perhaps the only worthwhile thing he's done in his entire life and will always regret ruining her name along with his. He also said that those 18 months were the most fulfilling and satisfying times of his life. Foster has been pulling cons since the 80s, but that doesn't mean he's old school. His most recent con involved a technology that most young people are familiar with, crypto. In 2020, Foster scammed a pilot from Hong Kong out of $1.7 million worth of Bitcoin. The scam revolved around a sports betting company called Sports Predictions that Foster was promoting. Foster, operating under the fake name Mark Hughes, told potential investors that a hired mathematician would use their skill to predict the outcomes of sporting events with near 100% accuracy. The savvy fraudster accepted Bitcoin as payment from the pilot and ran off with the man's money. In December of 2021, a team of professional fugitive hunters tracked Foster down to a home in Victoria, Australia, where he'd been staying while on the run for six months. When they arrived, the team of officers broke down the door and burst into the home. They found him inside and dragged a disheveled looking Foster out of the house by his arm. Ironically, this wasn't Foster's most bizarre arrest. His most iconic arrest occurred in Fiji, where Foster was literally running away from police. He was cornered on a bridge and decided he'd rather face the water. So Foster stripped down to his underwear and leapt over the side. On his way down, Foster hit his head on a boat and passed out in the water. Fijian police proceeded to fish Foster's unconscious body from the river and put him into a truck. Foster's career is entering its twilight period. Even though he's still scamming people, one of his main goals is to change how people remember him. He says he will accomplish this seemingly impossible feat by telling his story in cinematic form. Yes, Foster wants to film a movie about his life, but from his point of view. His plan is pretty simple. 
Foster will market the book he wrote on his life and career as a con man, similar to Frank Abagnale's highly disputed memoir, and hope a filmmaker wants to adapt the book into a biopic. According to an interview with the Sydney Morning Herald, Foster says he's very aware of his putrid reputation, as he calls it, and hopes that people will better understand him after seeing his story. However, Foster's hopes are a bit misplaced. Foster has never turned over a new leaf, unlike Abagnale, who redeemed himself after years of crime. Every time he gets out of prison, Foster starts a new scheme, or multiple schemes in some cases. And he's been running through the same cycle for his entire adult life. Click to watch one of these next videos. Let us know in the comments section who's worse, someone who scams people out of their life savings or hitmen working for cartels.